Lost in Translation was a great story because uh, we had been working with Sophia and her team at Good Machine as her international sales agent. So when we merged with USA Films and created uh, Focus, suddenly we were blessed with a domestic distribution apparatus. And so we immediately said, guys, let's do a deal and let's, let's, let's uh, distribute your movie. And you know, the film performs such an amazing hat trick because on the one hand, it announces uh, very proudly uh, its particularity, its specificity, in a, sense, in a good sense, its smallness. It's not gonna try to blow anything up. It's gonna try to get as close and as intimate and as detailed as it can about a particular slice of life, a particular moment in this person's uh, 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 evolution. And yet, at the same time, it does it something that most uh, American uh, films avoid like the plague, and rightfully so. It, uh, it creates a moment at the end of the movie which is completely ambiguous. That is to say, that great whisper from Bill Murray into Scott Johansson's ear that no one can hear, and you can't read his lips, so you can't figure out what he's uh, saying. In general, uh, uh, audiences uh, hate being excluded, especially from the most important piece of narrative information that you've built up to to the entirety of the, uh, of the movie experience. In this case, they so embraced Sophia's vision for what it means to allow, in a sense, the privacy of these characters uh, to continue and solidify at the end of the movie that uh, the film just took off. It really did. It was a great gamble in a sense. It was the essence of the film.